Hi guys, I am Sirachime, and I welcome you back to another episode of Pokemon Soul Silver. After a really long time, it is nice to be back and getting back into these things again. But <laughs> I guess you guys don't really care about that. So anyway, last time that I actually played this game, it's been a little while, but last time, we took on Morty at the Ecritique City Gym and won the battle quite handily. Thanks to our new members here, one of them being Calcifer right here and the other being Sakura. And just everyone in general contributed with the team and it was just an awesome victory all around. So yeah, it was a nice victory for my team. We managed to get the badge that was from Ecritique City. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was right now. It's been a little while since I played. But anyway, that's pretty much all ancient history now. So on this episode, we are going to leave Ecritique City since we've pretty much done everything here that we can actually do. And we're going to head on to our next destination, which happens to be Olivine City. So before we do that, we've got a little bit that I'd like to do really quick. There's a couple of things that I want to take care of here. We are almost done with this city, but there is one thing over here that you might actually find important. Actually, scratch that. It's very important. You can either get it now or get it later. I'm just going to get it now because I can slash will slash one two. Ha ha. <laughs> so anyway, if we go over here, you will see that we are at Route 42. And the reason I came over here is because, well, mostly for that item there. But if you go forward, you will see this exclamation mark. And a guy will come out and hit you and... Oh, boy! Dude, why are you running into me? Sorry that I bumped into you. Ah, it's no big deal. It's a, wait a minute! I thought maybe he might be hurting me, but... <laughs> There's a Flareon's tail on my butt. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Uh, did I hurt you? Nope, not as much as the Flareon tail currently burning my butt. <laughs> Please, don't cry. Here, take this. Kind of hard not to cry when a fire's on your bottom, but okay. With that, this guy will give you HMO4, which is the move Strength. It's a move called Strength. Thank you for repeating the obvious. When a Pokemon learns it, it can move boulders out of your way, which sounds interesting. I wish we could do this with many other obstacles like, oh, I don't know, my mother calling me all the time. <laughs> anyway, enjoy a happy mountain climbing life. I will do that. And there will go that thing and just leave me to burn my butt on a Flareon. Ah, oh, that is funny. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, from here, if you wanted to, you could head over in this direction and continue the adventure that's kind of out that way. But that would kind of defeat the purpose of how this game was made, so I'm actually going to save this for a little bit later. Something else that you might find useful for, as I said, this item up here. You check this out. This item is TM65 Shadow Claw. So if you have trouble with ghost types, you can come here and pick this up. This will make the Ecritique Gym a little bit easier. I wonder if anybody can actually learn that in my party right now. Let's get that check out. I'm kind of interested in teaching that. It's not a super powerful move. I mean, it's got a base power of 70. That's a pretty good move, especially if you want to teach to a physical Pokemon on your team. It looks like the only Pokemon that can learn it is Bloke, but I really don't want to give it to him right now, so we'll go ahead and just wait on that for now. I kind of wanted to see what that was about. Alright, so anyway, outside of that, there's nothing else that's really worth your time here. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and go back through Ecritique City and make our way up towards Olivine City. So to do that, obviously, we just need to make our way through here, say goodbye to the wonderful dance theater, the wonderful dancer kimono girls there. Eh, we'll be seeing a lot of them in the future, but we'll just worry about that a little bit later, because it's not important right now. <laughs> Alright. So once we make it through this little area here, we will come to what is essentially, wait for it, Route 38. Now here on this route, you can actually find a ton of new Pokemon. So we're going to go ahead and identify them, and while I do so, I'm going to do a few battles accordingly. Since we've got a Sailor up here, I think I'm going to switch my party around before I do this. I'll go ahead and throw out Sakura real quick while we do that. Alright, so when we go up here to this guy right here, he will say... What does he say? I've been overseas, so I know all about... Excuse me, I know about all sorts of Pokemon. Fine, you distract my viewers while I give them bios of stuff they might or might not want to catch. <laughs> Alright, so anyway. First new Pokemon you could find here is Magnemite, an electric steel type found in both versions of the game throughout all the time cycles. Now, Magnemite has a good special attack stat along with a respectable defense stat. In addition to that, this Pokemon has a very unique typing. Its Electric Steel type gives you a lot of resistances to work with, making this Pokemon a really good defensive typing. Unfortunately, Magnemite has subpar stats outside of its special attack and defense. It doesn't have a good HP, special defense, 
or speed stats, so it's kind of frail special-wise, and it's really slow. In addition to that, this Pokemon has a very barren move pool. It can only really learn Electric-type moves and really needs TMs to get the Steel-type stab that it might want. But even with that Steel-type stab, it still has a barren move pool. Electric Steel is not really good offensive typing. And the worst thing yet about this Pokemon is that when you do actually... You can't get this thing's full evolution just because of the fact that what you need to get in order to get this Pokemon fully evolved, you just can't obtain it here. You need the, the Mount something, a Mount Mortar, or Mag something, I don't really know what it is. But anyway, you can't get Mag Magnemite's final evolution, which makes this Pokemon kind of a letdown. So, long story short, I do deem Magnemite as a potentially useful Pokemon if you need a durable electric type. But outside of that, there are a lot of better electric types that you can get in the game. So, the second Pokemon you could find here as I battle this trainer is the normal type Pokemon Meowth, found in Soul Silver only throughout all the time cycles. Now, Meowth has a really good speed stat, along with a good ability and technician with a move pool that makes really good use of that move. Unfortunately, what really hurts Meowth is outside of its speed stat, it really doesn't have any other stats to work with. It has no offenses or defenses whatsoever. In addition to that, this Pokemon is outclassed in every way in both its role and its type. So because of that, I actually don't recommend Meowth all that much. There are better type, normal types out there, better Pokemon in general that could do a lot better job than what Meowth can. So the next Pokemon you could find in this route is the normal type Pokemon Tauros, found in both versions of the game throughout all the time cycles. It is worth mentioning that this Pokemon is incredibly rare. So Tauros here has pretty good stat distribution has a good attack stat, along with a great speed stat and a respectable defense stat. In addition to that, it actually stands out as one of the best normal types you're going to find in the game. Now, unfortunately, while it does have some pretty good stats all around, Tauros is held back by a low special defense stat, meaning it cannot take a lot of hits. In addition to that, this Pokemon has a pretty barren move pool. It could be pretty versatile, but you need TMs to really make this Pokemon bring out its full potential. And these TMs are not available till very late in the game. So because of that, I do deem Tauros as a potentially useful Pokemon, especially if you want a speedy, powerful, normal-type Pokemon. But if you want something that could work for you right now, you might want to look elsewhere, just because of the fact you don't get a lot of versatility right off the bat. Alright, so I'm going to switch my party around a little bit. Oh, wait, it was just Zubat that leveled up. Oh, well, I've given enough screen time to Sakura and Betty, so it's time to give Kels for time. Ha ha! Ha ha! Oh, I am in a mood right now. It's been a pretty interesting experience lately. Well, good grief. Annoying encounters are... Uh, random encounters are still as annoying as ever. Well, anyways, I was trying to say... I got a lot of stuff that I'll tell you guys. So, what? Okay, fine. We'll battle this jerk. Sound like... <laughs> Let me try something I learned today. You do that, and I guess while you do that, I will tell you guys about the other new Pokemon you can find here. <laughs> okay. There are three more Pokemon you could find, the first of which you could find in this route is the normal type Pokemon Mill Tank found in both versions of the game throughout all the time cycles. Worth noting, this Pokemon is incredibly rare. Now, Mill Tank has a surprising stat distribution. It has got a really good HP stat, along with a good defense stat and a respectable speed and special or attack stat, excuse me. And it's kind of worth mentioning that it's kind of rare to find a Pokemon that's this fast and this defensive at the same time. But anyway, to go along with a pretty good stat distribution, Miltake has two really good abilities, one of which gives you resistances to ice and fire type moves, the other gives you, well, allows you to hit ghost type Pokemon with normal type moves, which is always incredibly helpful. Now, unfortunately, while Miltank is a defensive Pokemon, it doesn't have a good special defense stat, and even its attack stat, while respectable, is only respectable at best. You throw into the fact that this Pokemon has a like Tauros has a pretty barren move pool, you get a Pokemon that's just more or less defense and not really good offensively. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're looking into this Pokemon. It is potentially usable if you need a defensive normal type, but that's really about it. So anyway, here we've got this kid here. I don't know what he really wants. I do not care, because I, well, I just do not care. <laughs> so moving on. The next Pokemon you could find on this route is the normal type Pokemon Snubble found in both versions of the game throughout all the time cycles. Worth mentioning that this Pokemon is incredibly rare. I really don't know what the creators were thinking when they made all these Pokemon kind of hard to get. But anyway, Snubble here has a pretty good attack stat along with a good HP stat. You throw into the fact that this Pokemon has the 
move or the ability Intimidate, and this did make it a very bulky physical Pokemon. But honestly, that's really about it about this Pokemon. Outside of Intimidate, it has low defenses, and it's kind of slow to go along with that. And it also doesn't have much in the way of a move pool until later in the game, which really kind of hurts it. But honestly, because of the fact that you've got Tauros available in this game, another normal type that kind of works as a physical attacker, you re I really can't recommend Snubble. I mean, it's got a good attack stat, but honestly, there are better options out there, especially when you've got Tauros available just on this same route. So finally, the last Pokemon you can find here as I swap out my new Pokemon is the normal flying type Pokemon Farfetch found in both versions of the game throughout all the time cycles. Now, I regret to inform you that Farfetch'd has no positive traits about him whatsoever. What do I mean by that? Well, it's very simple. This Pokemon has no stats to work with or abilities that it can make use of. It is outclassed in its role, in its type, and in every possible way that you could possibly imagine. Now, it does have access to a pretty versatile move pool that it could make use of, but it has no stats to use it. It is incredibly weak, incredibly frail, it can't do anything. So because of that, I don't recommend Farfetch'd at all. I mean, if you want a challenge for your game, there are better ways to get a challenge. I would say that Flareon, like I'm using right now, is a better way to go than Farfetch'd. But there you go. Don't recommend Farfetch'd. Don't get one. It's not worth your time. Okay, so now that that is out there, those are all the new Pokemon you could find. You did not just use up. <laughs> Why is Miltank haunting me even after I've defeated the gym leader? Alright, forget this. Go out there, Sakura. We're gonna finish this. This is what Sakura's meant for. To take hits and hit things back hard. <laughs> Alright, well, one thing I can say really quick. Of all the trainers on this route, this is actually one that you do want to battle. Because at the end, if you actually... Let's just beat this side duck really quick and I will show you what happens. This, let's just say that this trainer is incredibly important if you're going for the evolutions. Reason being, as soon as we have all this thing... Alright, we've defeated Dana, I see. So you can battle that way. Yes, I battle that way all the time. Alright, so anyway, you're really good with Pokemon. Boys give me items after battles, but sometimes they give me too much. Next time, I can share some of them, some, if you want. Let me get your phone number. You'll want to do this if you want an electric stone. If this last Dana happens to call you, she will call you saying that she has an electric stone, which will allow you to evolve Pikachu into Raichu, Eevee into Jolteon, and a couple of other electric Pokemon like that. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but yeah. If you want an electric stone or a thunderstone, this is where you get it right here. I highly recommend this. But anyway, next time a boy gives me something after a battle, I'll share it with you. Does that make me sound ungrateful? Eh, I wouldn't think so. Well, who do I care? I'm getting free items out of this stuff, so... <laughs> Probably not. Alright, I'm gonna switch around my party a little bit. I guess I'll go ahead and throw out Dopey out there. Dopey could use a little bit of screen time. Actually, Blow could use more screen time than anything, but anyway, we're gonna move on. So anyway, I know it's been a little bit since I've uploaded a video. I was gonna talk about this. And I really want to apologize for that. I had a lot of stuff happen. I, I know I told you guys in my last update that I had been cleaning up my life, so to speak. But there was another thing that kind of happened. I actually ended up getting sick. and I, Well, I'll talk about that in a minute, because first things first, exclamation mark! Balba. That is his name, Balba? Oh, what it, what you are holding is... What do you mean, what am I holding? What they call a Pokédex. Okay. Haven't seen one of those in ages. My name is Balba. <laughs> Sounds like something out of Star Wars. I used to run a Safari Zone in Fuchsia City, but it was becoming out of date with new entertainment options coming out. What, did our, what on earth could possibly replace a Safari Zone as far as entertainment options? I mean, the internet has nothing compared to going out to a Safari, seeing a bunch of new animals and Pokemon stuff like that. Well, anyway, I decided to go overseas to learn the newest technology and open up a state-of-the-art Safari Zone in Sienwood. It may be... Excuse me, it may be more than a coincidence that we are chatting. Why don't we register each other's number in the Pokegear? I can give you a call once the Safari Zone is open before I call anyone else. Do you want to register? I don't know why some old... Why do old people just want me to register my Pokegear number with them anyway? Ah, oh, well, anyway, you want to do this because there are a lot of new Pokemon when the Safari Zone is done, but there you go. We've registered Baoba in the Pokegear. 
Weirdest name ever. I'll let you know over the Poke Gear once it's ready. Thank you. Goodbye, you crazy jerk. <laughs> all right. So anyway, as I was saying, for all that happened. Apologize for not uploading videos for a while. After I did eventually get everything cleaned out like I said I was going to do, I actually ended up getting sick. Yeah, I caught strep throat shortly after all of that. And yeah, I've actually been sick with that. There's TM60 Drain Punch. You want that. Fighting type move recovers health, kind of like Giga Drain. Anyway, yeah, I'm sorry I haven't up doing a, little up, a lot of uploading lately. I'm hopefully going to get back in the swing of things, but we'll worry about that later. We've got more important things to do. Now, this place over here is the Lon Lon Ranch, or Lon Lon Ranch. <laughs> no, it is the Moo Moo Farm. Big difference between this and the Legend of Zelda. Anyway, in here, there's actually a sick cow, which is a mill tank. So, a mill tank here is sick, its cry is weak. Basically, what you have to do, if you go around and talk to these people, they'll say that you need to feed Oran Berries to this mill tank in order to actually help it. I guess for the sake of story progression, we could actually go talk to these people, since they might actually care, apparently. So we talk to this guy, he says, My milk tank ain't giving me milk no more. This here farm's got famous milk. Most everyone wants a drink. It gives a lot, gives me lots of milk, if and I feed it lots of berries, I reckon. Yeah, my worst attempt at being a southern person ever. So yeah, anyway, what you want to do here is if you actually have enough Oran Berries, I know for a fact that I do not, it will say that Miltank's cry is weak, and it'll ask if you want to give it an Oran Berry. If you feed like four or five of these things to him, he will get better, and you will be able to start selling milk. Or the, the farmers here will start selling milk once again. And I don't know why they just don't use the other four Miltanks here, but you feel, you heal this one, you'll get a Miltank. They'll start selling milk, and you can buy it there. kind of acts like a super potion. I'm not going to help anybody here because I hate milk tank and yes you can blame that totally on Whitney you crazy people so deal with your sick cows I am not going to help you you sick freaks of nature <laughs> all right I realize that's a little harsh but I really have no purpose for being here I, I don't care about this feature of the game maybe you do it's like I don't know what the difference is between this and a super potion it might be cheaper it might be more expensive I really don't care I hate milk tanks so we're moving on <laughs> All right, so as we make our way down here, you can actually get through this entire thing without doing any trainer battles if you're careful. Unfortunately, I am not careful, and I almost got caught by that. Wow, reflexes are awesome today. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Route 39 is what we're on. There are no new Pokemon you can find here. All the Pokemon you find on Route 38, you can find here on 39. So we'll just leave that at that. But anyway, once we cross these ribbons here, we will see that we are in Olivine City. The most interesting city in the game, not really, but it has some interesting things about it. We'll talk about those why we'll talk about why those are later. Anyway, we kinda Aw, oh, are you kidding me? Exclamation mark! Oh, if it isn't our old friend Richard doing his Morris Code thing. You again? Yes, are you, are you really surprised to see me? I've been following you all over the world. Moving on. <laughs> There's no need to be alert. I don't bother with wimps like you. Dude, that's tough talk coming from a guy that's lost me three different times. Speaking of weaklings, the city's gym leader isn't here, and is supposedly taking care of a sick Pokémon at the lighthouse. Hmm. Boo-hoo! Just let the sick Pokémon go. A Pokémon that can't battle is worthless. So is Farfetch'd. And Love Disc! Why don't you go train at the lighthouse? Who knows? It may make you a bit of a better trainer. Dude! You are a... Mm. We have a word for people like you around here where I live, but I will not say such things because I do not know such a word. <laughs> I, <t> I don't know. Alright, so anyway, here's the gym. Apparently the gym leader is actually not present. And if you go in here and wanting to actually take part of the gym leader, well, you will see that they are indeed not here. Now, the reason this is is because, well, we'll talk to the guy we always tell to shut up. It'd actually be nice to get some good information for once. We talk to him, he says, Jasmine, the gym leader? She's at the lighthouse. She's been tending to a sick Pokemon. A strong trainer is compassionate at the same time. Well, thank you for that bit of information, you stupid... Why is it people in these games never give us anything good to work with? Alright, well anyway, the gym leader's over at the lighthouse. We are going to take care of that, but I'd actually like to kind of break tradition a little bit and, t and take a little bit of time to kind of explore the city. I notice in all the episodes I've been doing, we got to get to a new location and don't explore it right away. And while I would like to actually kind of save most of this for later, there's really not a lot here that you can actually find useful. 
I mean, there are exceptions. This house right here is one thing that you will find incredibly helpful in this town. But anyway, exploring those things that are important. You talk to this guy, he says, Olivine is on the sea. And if it's on the sea, there is bound to be something to catch. You got that right. What a new Pokemon. Get into those later. I fished here for 30 years. Way to waste your life, dude. Would you like to face the sea and fish? Not really, but I will say yes just for the sake of argument because it says, ah, ha, ha, ha. We have ourselves a new angler. With that, we obtain the good rod. Not sure what the difference is between this and the old rod, but there you go. Water-type Pokemon aren't found in the sea alone. They go wherever there is water. Okay, so thank you for all of that. Sorry about that cut there, guys. Had a glitch beyond my control, but anyway. There's only a couple of other things that you're actually going to find useful in this particular city. One of which you can actually kind of find up here. Well, not actually kind of find, it is just actually up here. So if you go in here and go in this house right here, you will see this guy here, which if you talk to him, he says, Hi, I'm looking for this Pokemon. If you have a Krabby, would you trade it for my Voltorb? So yes, if you have a Krabby, which is available just outside of the city with the good rod, we'll identify it later. But anyway, if you catch a Krabby and trade it for this Voltorb, Voltorb here is a new Pokemon, so identifying him really quickly. Voltorb's an electric type found in both versions of the game when you trade here this person here with a Krabby. Now, Voltorb has an unbelievable speed stat. It's actually one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. Along with that, it's got a respectable special attack stat and a respectable special defense stat. Unfortunately, outside of those three stats, this Pokemon has a lot of weaknesses going against it. The rest of its stats outside of speed, special attack, special defense are subpar. Can't take physical hits, and even its low HP, you're not going to be taking a lot of special hits either. In addition to that, this Pokemon has no versatility whatsoever. Voltorb cannot even learn a good Electric-type move naturally. You need TMs to make that work. And even though you do get, an, you can get a good Electric move, that's all this Pokemon can really learn, except Explosion. But I doubt you want to go into battles and just, just to go boom and beat down a Pokemon. So anyway, in addition to not having any versatility or pretty good stats, this Pokemon is also outclassed in both its role and type. There are fast Pokemon out there, not as fast as Voltorb, but things that are faster that can do a lot of damage, and there are a lot of better electric types out there. So because of that, I actually don't recommend Voltorb. I just wanted to show you that this was here in case that you maybe wanted to have something, or you, I don't know, you were so suicidal and you wanted your Pokemon to go boom. I don't know, but there it is. If you want it, feel free to. I don't even have a Krabby, so I'm not going to worry about this right now. And that is just pretty much all that is important here. So anyway, there are a couple of other places that are kind of, well, they're not exactly bad, or they're not exactly good, but they're kind of interesting. If you go in this house here in particular and talk to this guy, he says, along the way to Cienwood, there are four deserted islands. Bad kids are taken to the islands as punishment. Dude, you are a horrible father. I've, I've heard of weird ways of punishing your child, but leaving them on an island when they're bad? That's just horrible parenting. Don't ever write parenting books, you jerk. What do your kids have to say about this? Whenever I get in trouble, Daddy always scares me. If I had a dad like that, I'd be scared too. Run away as fast as you can. My mom lets me go on an adventure at 10 years old. You are surely old enough to go on your own. Or maybe not. Who cares? <laughs> Alright. So outside of that, there's really not a lot else that's worth looking into. At least, not that I personally think is important right now. So, rather than actually look around, there, well, there is one other place that is important. And it is this place right here, the Olivine Lighthouse. Obviously, we want to go here because this is where the gym leader is. But we are going to save all that for the next episode. Yeah, I think we've done more than enough right now. We've made our way through Route 38, 39, and explored Olivine City, as short as it was. Yeah, some city, right? <laughs> so anyway, that'll just about do it for this episode. Next time in my Let's Play of Pokemon Soul Silver, we are going to go inside of the lighthouse here, make our way through it, and ultimately up towards Jasmine, so hopefully we can take her on and obtain our fifth badge. So, until that time, I will catch you guys later.